Hey guys, it's Nailbiter, and recently I decided to grind out three marks of excellence on the Object 140, and so I thought I'd post a few of those replays from the grind, a few of the better games that I had, and I think I've got maybe three other replays besides this one that I want to post, and I figured at least for this one that I'd add commentary to the replay. Uh, this was a game that I had on Sand River. It's, it's not a, an amazing game, but it's a, a pretty solid game. I think I ended up getting Ace Tanker. And I figured it'd be a good video or a good replay to show at least just for the first one of these, just to talk a bit about the 140. Uh, Sand River Encounter, you generally see both teams stay in the north. The cap doesn't usually see a lot of action. Uh, I mean, you can get games here and there where that, that does end up happening, but usually you'll see a lot of people go into that middle dune area. In fact, that's actually where I would usually go on this map, but I decided to try out the north, and you'll notice this replay is from the 9.7 patch, this area got changed in uh, the current patch, so it's a little more open and there's it's, this cliff doesn't exist here. Uh, so what you see me doing is maybe not quite as uh, applicable now, but I think generally speaking this position works relatively similarly. Uh, you can probably still go in this area in a medium tank and have a decent amount of success. So this batch on the enemy team is rushed up here and uh, he's trying to peek over the edge of this ridge and get shots on me. And even though he's shooting heat, uh, he's going to bounce off my turret unless he gets a, you know, is able to hit the, the cupolas on the top of the turret. That you do sometimes get penned through the front of the turret, even without heat on the 140, or you get overmatched on the roof of the turret, but uh, it's generally strong enough that that doesn't happen too consistently. So I was able to bounce a couple of shells there and force the batchet to back off. The other nice thing about the 140 in that situation is I have a little bit more gun depression than the other Russian meds, so I can uh, get some shots into that batch head a little bit easier. I was able to, I think, hit him twice to force him to back off, and now he's in a pretty vulnerable, vulnerable position. And I can just basically sit here, hull down, uh, since there's no artillery, I don't have to worry about that. And uh, 87 5 has a small gun, so I'm not too concerned about him getting shots into my turret or being able to pen my turret. And so I can just keep peeking over this this ridge and uh, take shots uh, at whoever is uh, <laughs> whoever is uh, trying to shoot me. And uh, so at this point, the cap starts to uh, go down. On looks like there's an enemy tank on the cap, and I pretty quickly make the decision there that I should just back out of this northern area and go deal with the cap. And there were a few reasons I made that decision as quickly as I did. I mean, first, obviously. My team has sent absolutely nothing towards the cap, and so I didn't really want to rely on my teammates going over and reacting to the cap pressure and getting resets. Uh, I figured it'd be just much safer for me to do it myself. It's also pretty apparent that, you know, even though there is something on the cap, that a lot of the enemy tanks were spotted in the north, and so there can't be too much in the south. I mean, regardless, either way, it, even if there were a lot of tanks, it's still probably the decision I, I, I should make the decision to go south. But it was also pretty clear that I wasn't going to be able to win that flank of the north anytime soon. The enemy still had a lot of tanks up there, and it would have been really slow for me to get through all of them. Uh, and I would have had to probably end up rushing uh, and doing things a bit quicker than I would have liked because of the cap pressure. So it's generally the safer bet to kind of leave that area. I still had a lot of teammates there too, so it wasn't like the fact that I left meant our team was going to just completely collapse in the north. We have a bunch of TDs uh, kind of staying back, which would make it difficult for the enemy to push. And so it's just a better bet for me to uh, go towards the cap and clear that off and uh, just also f almost find an opening, really, because it was pretty apparent at this point that the enemy didn't have much here besides what was on cap. So I'm just going to push straight up into this I-7. And I have got actually a few teammates here to help me. So I'm just going to get on one side and let them come from the other side and. Uh, take this guy out really quickly if we uh, can just uh, surround him. Because really your goal at, when you're playing a medium tank is to find an opening and find the tanks that are somewhat isolated and take them on one by one. And so uh, this IS-7 obviously is very isolated and uh, a really easy takedown. He had absolutely no support from anybody on his team. He probably pushed up just really way too far and we were able to take him up pretty easily. But that kind of opens up the match now as uh, I'm able to, where are the tanks now in the south, they're able to just completely flank around and get it behind the enemy. And we still have five tanks in the north, so it's not like uh, we're at any risk of uh, losing all those guys. 
because the one risk about doing something like this is your uh, your team is kind of split up into two parts and so if the enemy had grouped together and pushed one side uh, we would have been at risk to get overwhelmed but the the fact that we had still I mean, we still have three tds in the north and T the TDs are going to generally play pretty defensively, so it makes it a little harder to aggressively push. And uh, the enemy also just kind of split off as well. They had a few tanks try to come south to react to uh, our killing the IS-7. That, that one forward ends up just sort of YOLOing to his death, and this PTA is pretty cut off, cut off from the rest of the team. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty good, even though the score is fairly close still. I feel like we have this game won. I'm also still at full HP, so that obviously helps. And I can really just use the terrain at this point to uh, to just bully this Leo PTA. He has no armor, and I can just kind of poke over these ridges, and he's actually not even aiming at me. He's, the 1390 is rushing him as well. And so now it's really just a matter of cleanup. We have the enemy pretty much surrounded with uh, the couple of TDs that are still left in the north, and uh, me and this 1390 and E75 are swinging in around the south. I have actually managed to bounce quite a few rounds this game, which is, I mean, you sometimes do get a, sometimes the armor on the 140 can hold up pretty well. Uh, you'll get bounces off the turret if you can go hull down. Uh, the hull armor isn't great, but it is somewhat reliable. You'll get a few bounces uh, most games. So I clean with the 62, and that's just the 57 heavy left. Uh, so really, I mean, a pretty straightforward game for me. I never felt like I was in too much danger. Uh, I think the really it was just a matter of flexing out of the position in the north after I'd done, you know, probably around 2,000 or 3,000 damage early on and uh, flexing south to just uh, clean up the tanks that were isolated on the enemy team. Uh, but that's the end of the game, and uh, here are the post-game stats. So this was an ace tanker. I ended up doing 6,500 damage, which isn't really exceptional. It's a pretty solid round, uh, over 1,300 base experience. I did get a steel wall, actually, uh, so as I mentioned, the armor held up pretty well in this game, over 2,500 blocked, which is more than you'll usually get in a game with a 140, but uh, you do get these rounds here and there. So uh, a pretty solid game, and uh, look for those other 140 replays on my channel probably in the next few days. So thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later.